Hey guys, it's me, Carrie, and we are back with the next part of Dicey Song. I believe this is part eight. Don't quote me, but it'll be in the title, so you'll know when you see it. Anyhow, let's just get right into it. Excuse me. And I have a little bit of a scratch in my throat, so I apologize if I have to clear my throat or cough at all. I should have water by me, but that would require a brain and planning. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. The day that Graham had to go in for conferences was also Halloween and a Wednesday and the day Dicey's English paper was due. She hadn't told any of her family what she was doing. She wanted to astound them when it was handed back. She was the only one going to school that day. Because of the conferences, the little kids had a day off and were staying home under James's care. Dicey offered to stay home and look out for them, but Graham refused, saying it would only be for three hours or so. So Dicey, wait, oh, excuse me. She looked like there was something else she wanted to say, so Dicey waited, but Graham didn't say anything. Dicey, too, didn't say what she was thinking, that she was worried about giving James all that responsibility. When she got home after a day at school and an hour working with Millie on the distributor's order sheets, Graham was alone at the kitchen table. Dicey didn't hear any noise from anywhere. Where are they, she asked. In their rooms, Graham said. James is riding his route. What did their teacher say, Dicey asked. We'll talk about it later. Dicey looked at her grandmother. Graham did not look back at her. Dicey shrugged, took a banana, and went out to the barn. James's bike was gone, but the others were there. She hoped Sammy would stay up in his room, that he wouldn't come hang around her. Now that they were back on Eastern Standard Time, she couldn't even get an hour's work in, and she was just getting to the end of the first half of the boat. The Tillermans weren't celebrating Halloween. They never had, in fact. Their house in Provincetown was set way away, so no kids came to the door. Nobody ever came anyway. That was lucky, Mom always said, because they couldn't afford to buy a bowl of candy. A couple of those years, they had all, even Mama, gotten into costumes, sheets for ghosts or even paper bag armor, and had their own party, making popcorn on the gas stove, bobbing for apples in the dishpan. They ended up, as they usually did, singing. Dicey sighed, for what she didn't know. Maybeth had been asked to a Halloween party, but she said she didn't want to go. Dicey had asked her why not, because they couldn't have gone to get her when the party was over. The girl lived inland, not on the water, and too far away for a late bike ride. James walked his bicycle into the barn and set it against the side of an empty stall. He stood beside Dicey watching. Did she tell you? Tell me what? Who? We're in trouble. Dicey turned to look at him. What do you mean, James? What happened? We went up in the attic, he told her, daring her to be angry with him. And what was the matter with going up in the attic? And she came home. Graham, she said we had no business. She sent us to our rooms. She only let me come out for my paper route. Dicey thought about that. She's right, we hadn't asked. I thought we lived here, James complained. We do, Dicey said, but James waited for her to finish her sentence. That wasn't a very smart thing to do, James. I know, I was just curious. We apologized and told her we wouldn't do it again. Maybeth cried, Sammy didn't. It all seemed fair enough to Dicey. <clears throat> we weren't even up there long enough to really look around, James said. There are boxes of stuff and trunks and a couple of old toys and a cradle. Do you ever wonder, Dicey, why she doesn't have any pictures of her children? Dicey shook her head. And she doesn't talk about anything before, James went on. And we know where Mama is and that Bullet is dead. But there was a third name, remember? Don't you wonder? Nope, Dicey said. I do, James finished unnecessarily. I wonder about Mama, what she was like then. I promised we wouldn't go up there again, but I wish I hadn't. I bet there's an album up there. Mama never had one, Dicey argued. Graham could have afforded it, James argued back. It was a stupid argument, and Dicey didn't continue with it. Did you get your report on the pilgrims back? He kept them to show the parents, but he said I got an A. The kids thought it was super. They said so. James smiled at the memory. Dicey envied him. But it was getting too dark to work anymore, and her bare legs were chilly, and she was going to have to go inside and see if she could straighten out things between Graham and the little kids. It turned out that Graham didn't think anything needed straightening out. She looked around the dinner table at the three subdued faces and the wary one. I believe in closing the book on things, she announced. Does that mean you aren't angry anymore, Sammy asked? Graham nodded. Sammy smiled and looked relieved. Good oh, he said. I didn't like being in trouble. Neither did I, Graham agreed. And if we do it again, Sammy went on. Graham interrupted. If you do it again, I'll take your hands and sew them over your ears. Sammy giggled. How could I eat? We'll get you a dog dish, Dicey offered. 
We'll put it on the floor and your food will be all mushed together so that you can get it out with your tongue. Ugh, Sammy said happily. What about the conferences, James asked. Maybeth looked down at her plate. Graham put down her fork and waited until they were all, even Maybeth, looking at her. About the conferences, she said. I want to wait to talk about them until I've talked to Dicey. Dicey looked up, surprised. What was wrong now? When? Tomorrow? James insisted. Graham shook her head. I have a plan. This Saturday, Dicey and I are going to take a day away. What about me? asked Sammy. You and Maybeth and James are going to stay home. I called Mr. Lingerly to give him our number. The black telephone had been sitting on the living room desk for two days by then. Nobody had used it to call them, although the little kids had all dialed the weather and the time. And I asked him if he would come out to take care of you. The three faces went down to the three plates again. We're sorry, Graham, Maybeth said softly. I know you are, and I know you won't do it again, but... She hesitated, then went on. There was a lesson for me in this. I'd forgotten that when you leave children alone, they have a natural tendency to get in trouble. Did your children do that? James asked. I also spoke to Millie, who said you could take the morning off, Graham said to Dicey. But, Dicey said, no buts, girl, Graham said. Besides, it won't be much fun. We're going shopping. I don't know if you've noticed the cold coming on, but I have. While we've got the money from this welfare check, there are things you have to have, things I can't make myself. So Dicey and I will have a day off, after which we will talk about the conferences. <clears throat> were they bad, Maybeth asked. They were good things and bad things, Graham acknowledged. But there was nothing that made me regret you living here with me. The children exchanged pleased glances, and Sammy's face, Dicey noticed, was flushed with pleasure. I was proud to go in and say I'm Sammy Tillman's grandmother, or Maybeth's, or James's. Dicey bit on her lower lip. What Graham would say about Dicey's what I'm sorry. What Graham would say about Dicey's home ec grade, she was almost sorry she hadn't tried harder in the class, if it mattered to Graham. Is that all right with you, Dicey? Graham asked. Sure, if you want to, Dicey said. We'll take the bus up to Salisbury, where there's a mall, Graham said. I like bus rides, Graham Sammy volunteered. Well, I don't, Graham said. Apparently, Dicey thought from her seat by the window that Saturday morning, Graham meant exactly what she said. Graham sat stiff and straight beside Dicey. She was wearing her blue suit and a white blouse tucked in. She carried a purse and had put on her loafers with stockings. Graham wasn't planning to enjoy herself. Dicey wore her shorts, as always. She thought about talking to her grandmother, but shrugged and looked out the window instead, because Dicey did like buses. She liked any means of transportation. <clears throat> she liked going places. They rode up a highway past marshlands and farmlands. A, br a brisk wind blew at the grasses and trees. For the first time, Dicey felt like it really was fall. The sky hung low and gray over fields. She could see smoke curling up out of chimneys in some of the houses they passed. It was one of those first fall days that look colder than they really are. But it really was cold. When they had stood waiting at the bus station, her legs got goosebumps from the wind. Mr. Lingerly, Lingerly drove them into town, and he said he'd come pick them up, too. Graham didn't want to take the ride, but he pointed out how large the waves would be under this wind, and if they bought anything, it would be soaked before they got home again. He said he liked to help. Graham's chin went up when he said that, because she did not like to be helped. But he had insisted and insisted, saying that Saturday was usually a pretty long, lonely day for him, saying that he was going to try riding on Sammy's bike. Sammy bit his lip to keep from saying something about that, saying finally that he liked being welcome at their house and he was only offering what fa family friends offered, so Graham gave in. The bus entered the limits of the scraggly city. Dicey studied the shopping centers and the low office buildings, each surrounded by its own parking lot. Cars and trucks crowded the road. For a few minutes, Dicey found this exciting, all the people, all their different lives and faces, then the grayness, the papers blowing on sidewalks, the sandy-colored sameness of the buildings diminished that excitement. Beside her, Graham stirred. Do you know where we're going, Dicey asked? Yes, Graham answered. The mall had an arched gateway leading to acres of parking. Lots. <laughs> the bus stopped before an entrance to the long building. Dicey and Graham climbed down the steps and went in. Graham went straight to a list of stores in the mall and began reading down it. Dicey planned to enjoy herself if she could. She listened to the voices of the crowds of Saturday shoppers. She stared at families and couples, at gangs of girls and boys. Some of the people were hurrying on as if they had a lot to do and not much time. Others were meandering about, stopping at store windows as if they had a whole day to kill. 
Graham joined Dicey. When I was a girl, she said, looking about her, Crisfield was the big town. The people from Salisbury came down to Crisfield. She took a breath and her chin went up. Let's get going, girl. We've got a lot to do. I thought we were going to talk, Dicey said. That too, Graham said, stepping briskly out. Graham took Dicey first to a five and ten. They stood in front of a table covered with wool, while Graham touched the skeins of yarn and made hmm sounds. At last she turned to Dicey. You like any of these? Dicey studied the unnaturally bright colors, greens and reds and yellows. She tried to find one that wasn't as bad as the rest. No, she said. Neither do I. Graham marched out and on down the center walkway. When she found a little store with its windows crammed with pillows on which kittens had been embroidered, she entered. At the back of this store, there was a whole wall of wools. Graham started pulling down colors. Dicey looked around. There were a few women in the store looking at instruction books or studying kits. The sales lady sat on a tall stool behind the counter, her hands busy with thread and canvas. <clears throat> she looked more like one of the summer residents of Provincetown than a sales lady in a mall, Dicey thought. She wore makeup on her eyes, lips, and skin. Her hair had every strand in a particular place. The woman looked up and caught Dicey's eye. Can I help you, she asked. Dicey shook her head and turned her attention back to Graham. Graham had pulled down a dozen colors. She had spread them out on the table before her. Every now and then she would touch one and move it around to sit by itself. What are you doing? Dicey asked. Sweaters, Graham answered. Is there a color you like? You want me to make us sweaters? It's either that or buy them, Graham answered grimly. I didn't know you could knit. Graham shrugged. She put her hand on a yellow the color of daffodils. That looks like Maybeth to me, and a good blue for Sammy. But brown for James, don't you think? Isn't that an awful lot of work? <coughs> Come winter, I've got the time. What about you? What do you like? Dicey liked the brown, but Graham pulled out a kind of greeny bluey skein flecked with white. Heather, she said. Dicey liked that all right, too, and she liked it more the more she looked at it. Feel it, Graham instructed. Dicey obeyed, and the wool was thick and soft under her fingers. Heather's the one I like for you, Graham said. What about you? Dicey asked. I've got plenty. I don't have to go out in public, Graham said. Dicey, her mind on sweaters, thought that Graham should have one in a dusty rose, or maybe in black, to set off the snap in her eyes. But Dicey couldn't knit. Graham paid. Dicey hefted the awkward bag of wool. Did your mama teach you how to knit? Graham asked Dicey. I can't do any of that stuff, Dicey mumbled. Oh well, Graham said. They walked on into a two-story Sears and Roebuck that once that occupied one end of the mall. There Graham wound her way to the children's department. She picked out eight pairs of blue jeans and they went to get in line by the cash register. That's thank you, Graham, Dicey said, because their grandmother was buying them clothes. Children can't wear shorts all year round, Graham answered. Maybeth's teacher is worried about her. She's not progressing, not to speak of. Mrs. Jackson says the school system has home tutors who are trained teachers and know the kind of work the class is doing. She says we should try to get one. She says she doesn't think it will help, but she wants to try everything because Maybeth is such a sweet child. She says Maybeth is failing. She says Maybeth gets along beautifully with her classmates and is very mature. Graham stopped as suddenly as she had begun. Dicey felt as if Graham had been hitting at her. Punch, punch, punch. Millie can't read, she announced, following her own thoughts. Not much, not like she should. She told you that? She'd never admit it to me. We were girls in school together. I know, Dicey said. Maybeth's not like Millie, Graham said. How had Graham known that was a question in Dicey's mind? Are you sure? Sure, Graham told Dicey, but... At that moment, their turn to pay came, and Graham just said, We'll talk about it over lunch. Think about it, meanwhile. They had to go to another department for long-sleeved shirts for the little kids. Dicey already had all the made-over shirts she needed. Graham made quick selections, plain colors for Maybeth and striped for the boys. They got into another line. Sammy's work is all right, Graham reported. She told me I was lucky to have such a quiet, well-behaved grandson because boys could be such hellions. She said if only every boy in the class had Sammy's attitude. Well, Dicey was surprised. She was glad that that was all right. He hasn't always been that way, she told Graham, relieved. He still isn't, Graham said, then snapped her mouth shut. Dicey felt her shoulders sag. It wasn't because they were tired or she was tired. The bags they got were big, but not heavy. She thought she had a good idea of what Graham was thinking. <clears throat> Sometimes she almost wished she didn't have any brothers and sisters. How about James? Was James's teacher pleased with him? 
Graham had her purse open to pay, and she put bills into the sales clerk's hand before she answered. Daisy almost told Graham not to bother saying, uh, not to bother saying unless it was something good. Oh, yes. He says what we all, including James, know, that he's unusually intelligent. He says James's work was better at the beginning of the year, but the other kids caught up with him pretty quickly. He especially mentioned James's report. He showed it to me. James got an A, Daisy said. It wasn't the same report he showed us, Graham said. Daisy took the bag, jammed it into the bigger one that held the jeans, and did not answer. Back in the center of the mall, Graham looked about her. Lunch, she said. She led Daisy back along the length of the building to the other end, where there stood a two-story department store. There was a restaurant, too, right, behind the en right by the entrance, a real restaurant where there was a special waitress who asked you how many you were and led you to a table. But Graham, Dicey protested. They had seen a couple of hamburger stands. Graham ignored her. The waitress gave them a table by the window that looked out to the center of the mall. Put those bags down, Graham instructed Dicey. Graham, Dicey obeyed, jamming the bags up against the wall. This is my treat, for me, Graham said, looking around with satisfaction. She opened the menu and looked at it. Dicey followed suit. She studied the prices. She found the three cheapest things and then looked to see what they were. When Graham asked what she wanted, she said, spaghetti. Graham stared at her over the top of the menu. I like spaghetti, Dicey said. My rule is when you go to a restaurant, you have something you don't get at home, Graham announced. I'm going to have a club sandwich, and I advise you to do the same. Dicey skimmed around for a club sandwich to see how much it cost. Why, she asked, playing for time. Because it tastes good, Graham said, folding her menu firmly onto the table. I know what you're thinking, girl, and with the amount of money we're spending today, this little isn't going to make any difference. Then she smiled quickly. Besides, I've handed you some problems you'll need food energy to work on. Okay, Dicey said. I hope I like it. If you don't, I'll eat it, Graham, Graham said. She ordered them two club sandwiches on white toast with extra mayonnaise. For herself, she ordered a pot of tea. Dicey wanted a soda. Small, medium, or large, the waitress asked. Small, Dicey said. Large, Graham corrected her. When their drinks were before them, Graham looked at Dicey and said, What do you think? Dicey didn't know what she was talking about. About your family, girl. Snap out of it. You've had weeks and weeks without worrying, but the vacation is over now. You've got to help out. But, Dicey thought, I am helping out. I have a job, and I haven't exactly not worried. I don't know, she said. Graham snorted impatiently, so Dicey tried. If the teacher says Maybeth can get a real tutor for nothing, that's not bad, is it? She asked. Graham waited. And Sammy's all right, and James is doing well, so what's the problem? Graham waited. Dicey put the straw into her mouth and sipped at her soda. She looked out the window. Walking away from them, down the mall, were a boy and a girl. They had their arms around one another. The boy's arm was over the girl's shoulder, and his hand was tucked into the rear pocket of her jeans. Her arm went across his back and into the pocket of his jeans. They leaned their heads towards one another, talking, as if there was nothing important in the world except what they had to say right then. When I was a girl, Graham said, only engaged couples could spend an afternoon alone together, and even then the most they would do in public was hold hands. People say things were easier then, and maybe they were. Dicey followed the couple with her eyes. She didn't know what Graham was, why Graham was talking like this, but she was interested in what Graham would say about what it was like when she was young. Things were surely simpler, but I guess we made them hard because I don't remember anything simple or easy about it. I'd be inclined to think things are easier now, wouldn't you? Dicey looked back but didn't answer. I didn't say better, just easier, Graham told her. Dicey nodded to show she was listening, but she was wondering, how long was she going to have to spend worrying about her brothers and sisters? It's for as long as you live, Graham said, as if Dicey had spoken aloud. That's something I learned, even though I didn't want to. For as long as you live, the attachments hold. At that moment, their sandwiches were put down in front of them. Dicey looked at hers, four triangles of toast layered with turkey and bacon, lettuce, and tomato, like rock strata on cliffs. A pile of potato chips was in the center of the plate. Graham passed her a little glass of mayonnaise. So you've got to think, Graham said, and I'd be grateful if you'd tell me what you think. Reluctantly, Dicey agreed. Well, Graham was right. She'd had a long rest from it, longer than she could remember ever before in her life and she couldn't fool herself that her family didn't matter to her. She took a bite. Okay, she said. I think I know about James. But Graham, this sandwich is good. I told you, didn't I? Graham answered, pleased with herself. 
All right, guys, we're going to pause right there and pick up with more next time. I hope you guys are continuing to enjoy this story. It's such a wonderful book. There are actually, they, they refer to this as the Tillerman Cycle, the series of books about this particular family. I believe, I don't know if they were all out when this one was printed. No, they. this particular edition was printed back when like it was first released I think this is is it a first edition it might very well be a first edition yeah I think it is so um it doesn't list the other ones but I think they're like seven altogether to be honest with you I really 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 love homecoming the first one and this one and the others were kind of meh for me um I'm debating reading more, but I may just take off with another type of book when I'm through with this one. We'll see. But we got a long way to go. We're only this far in, and we got this much more. So we'll be a while reading Dicey Song. But um, yeah, it, this one gets, I think, deeper in some ways than even Homecoming does. And I'm really hard-pressed to decide which one I like better. I'll be curious when I'm through to see which one you guys prefer. I mean, one, it's sort of like one couldn't exist if the other hadn't existed first, but um, I really enjoy them both. So, And this one actually won the Newbery Medal in 1983, which is like a super duper achievement for children's or young adults. I don't know if it's just children's literature or young adults fits into that category because I don't really remember YA being a category when I was young. But anywho, all right, no babbling. going to shut up now. But thank you for listening, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I will be back soon with more stuff. Bye, guys.